the people on the grid. to Judy Diaz Alama. Mm -hmm. Judy, uh, you are the director and program coordinator of the Barcelona Art Academy. Mm -hmm. I should, well, I should say founder of the Barcelona Art Academy. Academy. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least so, for now. <laughs> just for now, yes. At least for now, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hopefully you, in the future I can delegate many, many, many things. Yes. Uh, for now I have to be there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you are the mind behind it. Mm -hmm. So um, t tell us, Jordi, you were born in Granollers mm -hmm. um, a, wh a while back, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, have you always been into painting and art? Yeah, yeah it's something that I knew when I was really, really young. Uh, I had a lot because uh, my grandfather was a painter and also I had a I have an uncle that he draws very well and all my affection about art and about drawing and painting it becomes from both of them. When I was young uh, this uncle takes, or took me and I was sitting, instead of doing homeworks they say draw, draw, draw. Wow. When I was waiting for my parents uh, after the school yes. to, to return home. Yeah, so your uncle was a big influence. Yeah, it was especially him when I was young. And did he see that you had talent at a young age? I suppose. Yes. It was more for fun. He liked it so much. He liked so much the drawing and the painting, and he just wanted to share with me, with me, and also with my sister. My sister was really, really talented, even better than me when I was young, because. My sister grew together with me and my uncle. Right. So, but at the end, right now my sister, she don't do anything about that because uh, she decided to do other things. Uh, it's not about uh, dedication and about talent. It's also it affects the passion, the passions, and also be really aware about. You are looking for and what you want to do in the, in the future. It takes a lot of time, a lot of hours. Commitment. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So your sister, um, she hasn't followed the same direction. No. So um, you then went on to study uh, at the fine art at the University of Barcelona, mm -hmm. and then you then went to Madrid as well. Mm -hmm. So, so that, what was the difference between the style of learning? in Barcelona and Madrid? Well, in Barcelona I was studying fine arts in the university and it's true after finished the studies, the official studies art degree, I decided to go in Madrid, especially in Chinchon. It, it's a, a small, a very small village very close to Madrid, 40 kilometers more or less, uh, to be inside in one school, one academy, that it could, well, that one painter, one famous painter, that is Guillermo Muñoz Vera, uh, provides the opportunity to, at least it, we were six or seven students from around the world, mm -hmm. and we just stayed there, uh, painting together with him. Uh, so it wasn't an official school, it wasn't an official degree, and even program. Right. Just stay there and paint, as much as you can. Yeah. We, work, we I remember that we work at least. Uh, we work at 14 hours a day. Wow. So it, when I was, when I 
it was my period that I really realized that I wanted to be a painter. Well, Chinchon is the perfect platform to grow as an artist, especially, or at least at the beginning of my training. It affects me a lot because Chinchon is a, a village that it has 2,000 uh, people living there, so it's there are nothing to do. Uh, it's it's quite nice. Uh, a small village, I see. It's a very small village, so the only thing that you couldn't do there yeah. is uh, painting. Work, work, work. For that reason, we spending so much time just painting. Right. So it's not a famous school. Is it a famous school in Madrid uh, for painting? It is the academy because there are uh, this is called Fundación Arauco that is in Chinchon. It grows in Chinchon. There are uh, they have a little academy in inside Madrid, and this is quite famous. But I was in the main uh, installations in Chinchon, and it it wasn't a school. It right. was the possibility to to stay uh, in in one studio shared with other great artists and together with Guillermo Muñoz Vera. G Guillem Guillermo Muñoz Vera. Okay, so he's Chile. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he's a famous uh, painter, yeah. Painter and teacher. Mm -hmm. He's okay. one of the best painters, uh, realistic painters from the States. And what's what is the style? A uh, realistic painter. It's quite uh, hyperrealism, but with some expression and brush strokes. Okay, and then you went on to study at the Florence Academy, mm -hmm. which is classic uh, mm -hmm. painting. Yeah, uh, the style of Guillermo Yavera, it's more contemporary. Mm. Uh, they provide me very good um, methodologies, working from photo, um, painting our reality, so I learned there a lot of things. Right. And technical skills and new medias, new brushes, new techniques. So I was very happy to be there. And after this training, I wanted to go back uh, to the tradition. And then I was looking for something or some school very classical, mm -hmm. like Florence Academy. So yes. I decided to complete my training uh, looking for something much more specific and traditional. And then from Florence, you then decided to set up the Barcelona Art Academy. After Florence Academy, yeah. So during your time there, what, what made you think to uh, set up a school in Barcelona? Well, uh, in Florence Academy, I learned so much. I learned uh, one methodology that it works for everyone. So it wasn't the, the reason eh, that I was in Florence. It, the, reason, the real reason it, uh, it becomes when I was here working after my second year in studying in Florence. I was working uh, here in the University of Fine Arts. Uh, it's where I, uh, I understood that the people that want to, to learn how to, how to paint well and how to draw well. And Fine Arts University for the program, it doesn't get this uh, training to the students who want that. Because, for example, our um, program provides uh, maybe four or five hours a week just drawing to the students. And it was something opposite in Florence that you spend there at least eight hours a day just drawing and then painting. So in a year, uh, in, in one academic training like Florence, mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna go more, much more advanced because you you will have ten times more experience. In arts, uh, it's good. The university, I'm not saying that they have a bad program, but they have a very generic program. It's where you learn a little bit of drawing, a little bit of painting, a little bit of um, art history, photography, um, sculpture. You learn and touch many disciplines. But I think that after this training, you need to be focused in something and really get the speciali specialization mm -hmm. uh, in something. Okay. And your style of painting is tradition with realist, with mm -hmm. modern. So, and that's very much what the school is all about, the Barcelona Art Academy. Mm -hmm. 
exactly. I'm creating. I created this school uh, from the things that I learned in all my training, and I learned so much in fine arts. I learned so much in Chinchon from the Finarapo. I learned so much from few courses and workshops that I started with Od Nedrum or even um, Antonio Lopez Garcia with other good painters, and then obviously the the good foundation of Florence Academy of Art Program. Right. So I'm trying to get a mix mm -hmm. and to provide to my students the my my training. Right. I receive it in all these different locations and and painters. Okay. And and how long ago did you set up the academy? Uh, set up, setting up the academy. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this academy runs at least three years ago. We started three years ago, mm -hmm. right? and it takes six months or five to prepare everything. So it happened very quickly. It was very fast. Everything is. It, was that because your vision was very clear? Yeah, absolutely. How many students have enrolled in? I mean, each year. In three, in three years. Well, five. yes, in three years, if if you can. Well, next year we probably will have. 150 students. Okay. And every year this school is growing much and much. Growing more. Okay. Tell us about, you know, this is a summer course that's mm -hmm. going on and um, what's, you know, what are they doing in this class? Well, here um, it's a summer workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, it works for two weeks yeah. and it's Gregor Zwida. It's a famous uh, sculptor from Poland who arrives here uh, to teach to our students and the students who want to enroll in this uh, program, in this right. workshop. Uh, to have the opportunity to learn from him. So right now uh, they are discussing the next project that they're gonna start uh, this afternoon yeah. with him. Mm -hmm. Probably it's gonna be a half half size sculpture. Yeah. And they are just sketching and decided together with the models. Okay. The so you have visiting artists who do workshops mm -hmm. here every year. Okay. I'm trying to get the best ones. Very good. And also you do sculpture classes. Mm -hmm. We have a sculpture program, a digital program, painting program, and drawing program. Okay. And, and our regular teachers are teachers who come here uh, from everywhere, different parts of the of the world. Yeah. Have teachers from California, from Sweden, from Australia, from France. Wow. So very we good. are a very international art school, yeah. Great. And also international students who come Absolutely. here to mm -hmm. do the courses. At least uh, it's in 80%, 85% of the students who are coming every year are yeah. from outside of Spain. Okay. And how, lo how, how long are the summer courses? Uh, between one week and two weeks. Small sketches. They are receiving uh, the the theory, of course, every day, and the goals and the things that they have to do well, every in every stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and here they are trying to do a long pose. It's a 
final uh, good resolution um, drawing. Yeah. You have few examples in the, in the walls there. Uh, they are just starting, but after complete this project, they're gonna transfer this drawing and they're gonna keep working on it by with using painting. I see. So this will be the next step will be to, to paint it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they start sketching and then they mm -hmm. put it finish in. the the workshop here. In, it takes two weeks this workshop to finish it, and they're gonna complete the figure by painting I using see. color, right. and they're gonna learn the, the the main theory that is behind of all this process. Okay, and the teachers here are regular teachers. Regular yes. teachers and even advanced students. It's, oh, are they? Mm -hmm. Okay. Students who are um, studying with us. Yes. From the beginning, that right now they are um, completely programmed. They are teaching. allowed and prepared, you know, to teach here. Why? Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, many, many of um, our students have the possibility to support and to get experience inside the same school as a teacher. I see. So it's another good reason and another good line in their curriculum. And, uh, what was the name of the contest that you won? Was it the Dias Alama? The, the Alama. Alama. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many artists uh, apply for that? That competition, competition. every year around 2,000. Right, so you won out of 2,000 yeah. students. And any, any of the artists here, are they applying to do the right now, yeah. contest? It's, it's kind of obligated. Oh right, they have yeah. to do it. They have to do it, especially when you finish the program and you are prepared and you are working your own works inside the residency program. Uh, I recommend very strong that uh, the competitions are very good platform to promote your own Okay. Work. It's uh, a moment that many, many people can see your work okay. very easily. So it's good to have uh, exhibitions and of importance. The important thing in this kind of um, competitions is not to get the prize. Obviously no. If you get the prize, it's perfect. Yeah. Because you get uh, it's to be but, uh, and more um, promoting things. But if you are there, uh, you can consider that you you win. I see. So many people will will see your work, and then you can start to contact with uh, galleries, uh, critical art who want to interview you easily. I see. And um, before we move on to this uh, mural behind us, um, you know, for any artist going into the market, mm. you know, you, you've mentioned three things, but how do you see the future of art? For, for artists? Mm -hmm. Well, it's very rich and it's full of opportunities. Um, there are many speci different specializations that we can um, say here. So if you are a good artist, you don't have to just paint or just score. You can be working in many companies, uh, digital companies for the films or for the video games. Yeah, because digital art is very much mm -hmm. uh, now, isn't it? If you know how to draw, how to manage the light, how to manage the color, then you can select one technique or other one. If you paint well in oil, you want to paint well in, in digital, mm -hmm. because it's just changing the technique. As I say, that is um, for example, uh, between oil and aquarella, watercolor, sorry. Okay. Uh, you can be better with one style, but it's just technique. If you are a good artist, you want to be able to work in one technique or the other one. Mm -hmm. so, so you need to choose your field mm -hmm. and be specific. Yeah. And I'm completely sure that uh, the figurative painting uh, is growing uh, very high, and every time more people are are more interested on this kind of art. Right. And yeah, I think that the future, if the figurative painting gets an old quality, yeah, uh, are gonna be fashion in our reality, in our contemporary, because the public 
will want to buy something that they like, they yeah. enjoy, yeah. they appreciate and yeah. they understand. Okay. And the figurative language is something that gets these uh, concepts. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And um, if anyone was wanting to do a course at the Barcelona Art Academy, mm -hmm. you know, what are the benefits of doing this course over going to Florence, for example? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, art difference course. Here in Barcelona Academy of Art, uh, we start more or less in the same methodology, uh, very academic and straight, straight uh, program, drawing program. Mm -hmm. But after after the drawing program that it's quite similar to Florence, when you enter to the painting uh, program, and I, I want or, or I'm trying to provide to my, to the students from Barcelona Academy of Art something less rigid, something much more creative, something much more um, ubiquitous in our reality, in mm -hmm. our contemporary, mm -hmm. something uh, or try to give much more importance to the concept. Okay. So if you want to be an artist, you have to think a lot your strategy and your themes. It's not about learning how to do or reproduce one Im image that doesn't care. No, no, the image cares a lot. So I'm trying to ubicate uh, this school, Barcelona Academy of Art, in our contemporary, mm -hmm. uh, giving to the students the the skills that they, the basic skills that they need. They require, yeah. Uh, uh, a strong work, but this work, I'm just saying, that needs to be, uh, in terms of concept, also very strong, because without concept, and if you just have technic things, then what's the meaning of the artist? Sure. But you're bringing out their own style. Mm -hmm. You're not sort of telling them how to do it yeah. a certain way. After thinking in the technique and in the concept, then try to grow as a, your personality and as a personal and singularity artist. Yeah, sure. Because I remember there's a school in Florence, for mm -hmm. example, called Charles Cecil. Mm -hmm. And they very much, um, you know, all the painters who have studied there, mm -hmm. their styles were very similar mm -hmm. because it was very much influenced by yeah, his. To don't do that. No. I Everyone has to be different. Everyone is growing with the same base, but they're going to get more freedom after they completing the, the program. Um, and just you know, tell us about this mural that's been commissioned by a church in Bic. Mm -hmm. What what is it? What's happening in this picture? Well, and what's the story? That's my first uh, big project. So it's around seven meters by three yeah. meters. Uh, it's a commission from the church, and they wanted to 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 do a, a portrait. The, uh, about the Pope, mm -hmm. uh, Pablo II, that it's that one. Jean Paul II, yeah. Pablo II, exactly. And I'm representing here one moment that he gives to the youngest people the, the crows. Mm -hmm. And these crows are going to be traveled around the world for different countries. Okay. Encouraged by the um, youngest people. I see. Mm -hmm. So it's representing uh, many uh, young people around the world in this picture as well. Mm -hmm. And many different cultures and countries. We can see the flags here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the and flags is something because they are very. The story that is in, in behind this painting is it's quite interesting. There are different little stories and, uh, and anecdotes. For example, in terms of flags. You can see flags and you can recognize flags, mm -hmm. not at all, because are not real flags. It representing flags, but are not real, because I don't want in this case uh, to be uh, politic inside the politics. Yes, so religion. So and you can see uh, flags, but if you see carefully, they're not real they're not flags. Real. No. So that's, but, but you can see uh, certain colors influenced mm -hmm. by the countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what's real. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so this message will be um, delivered 
uh, in the church in mm -hmm. Bic. And how long has it taken you to paint it? For now, I'm, I spent seven months and I'm gonna keep working at least for one month and a half more. Okay. So, yeah, I have to present this work at the end of October. So next year probably we're gonna have to open an extra building. Yes? In, in Poblenet? Probably, yes. Yeah. Okay. And in two years uh, we're gonna open a new program. The, it's gonna be um, a university program, an official art degree that it's gonna be shared together with this uh, actual program. So that's gonna be very important for, for the future because we're gonna be the first school around the world with this kind of uh, program, the traditional program, and adapted to our modernity, and the only one who will get the totally uh, official art degree around all Europe. Wow. So that's the... With the style? Yeah, yeah. With modern, real, 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 modernist and, and mm. real art as well as traditional painting. So we're going to become to one fine arts university here in, in, in Barcelona that is going to be completely different to the actual fine arts from UBI. Okay, mm -hmm. but, but because of the style, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, the very good. The program and the methodology, yeah. Very focused. So that's going to be the future of this school. Very good. So we have a long travel. Yes, you do. Because was, was your vision the same? I mean, did you have this vision to become a mm -hmm. place to study art, you know, mm -hmm. for, for in terms of doing degrees mm -hmm. in art here? Mm -hmm. Did you always plan to do that? Or is it just keep, it just keeps growing with your no, ideas? It, it keeps growing. My plan it was um, open, as I said, as a small school. Yeah. Where I had time to do my your own, own work and also uh, courage to go from the students, to, to all the students. And but the problem is, or is not the problem. It's a success. I have to be happy with it. Yeah. That. Every year and every term, there are more people from around the world who wants to come here and learn from us. Amazing. So I have to receive them. Yes. So how I can do it? Make this project bigger, no? Amazing. So. Amazing. Uh, Jordi, thank you for joining us today oh, with welcome. People on Thanks the Grid. To and we, we look forward to uh, seeing your progress mm -hmm. in the next years to come. Thank you very much.